We've got some optimization to do, y'all. So quick show of hands. Who here has a website? Hey, we're in the right spot. Awesome. All right, put your hands back up if you think your website's doing a good job. OK, a lot less hands. Cool. Put your hands back up one more time. Last time, if even though your website's doing a good job, you want more out of your website. Yeah, everybody puts your hands back up. So we're never happy. We are never happy with our website. We expect it to be our best sales tool. And like Aaron mentioned, we expect it to almost be our best salesperson. So over the next 20 minutes, we're going to dig into some of the areas that if we optimize and we look into, we should see an increase in conversion. Seven things that we can do right now to affect that change. So as we look at this, these are our seven things. But this could take literally all day. So we're going to prioritize three, and coincidentally, the first three in here, improving our page performance, leveraging our actual user data and the information, and optimizing our most important conversion pages, putting the effort where it makes the most sense. And don't worry, we're not going to talk a lot about code. There's no code in here. But we are going to talk about why these things are important and why we need to make sure that the effort goes there and the results we'll see from prioritizing them. We're going to start with improving page performance. Why optimize our websites? Why talk about page performance? Because at the end of the day, we've already said this, it's about the human. It's about the user, the person interacting with these tools. Speed matters, y'all. We all have had that experience where the website's not fast. It kind of stinks. But it's more than speed. It's about the experience. Experience matters. Show of hands, who here has loaded a website from your phone that is so slow, you immediately want to hit that back button? Yeah, it is that F word. It's frustrating. You want to take your phone and throw it across the dang room. It's like, what are we doing, y'all? That's a bad experience. That's what users are encountering. And there's people in this room that likely have that. This is what that yields. 53% of people leaving your website if your experience is longer than three seconds to load. Three seconds, and we lose 53% of our users. That's a lot of people, gang. That is a lot of lost opportunities. Salespeople, that's lost conversations for y'all. That's like going to your local store, seeing a line outside the door, and you're like, I'm looking at any other place to be but here. I don't want to wait in line. That is the experience a long load feels like on your website. More than that, again, lost opportunities. Lost conversations. Your digital storefront is literally making people wait in a queue, and it's not great. We have to optimize for the human so that we can optimize for the robots. And so often, people get these things mixed up. We got to do what Google wants, the Google gods of the world. No, do what the humans want. Focus on that. One of the ways that we can do this is looking at how we are serving that experience. Google gives us the tools. There's a very geeky thing called Core Web Vitals. Show of hands, who knows what Core Web Vitals is? All right, we got some hands up. Heck yeah. We're going to simplify that today. These are things that Google tells us, and they use this to measure our actual experience, right? So how people are interacting with things day in and day out. What Core Web Vitals really means, I'm going to make it super duper simple, kick it like we're five years old. We have to have our first interaction with our website feel extremely fast. That goes to that experience. We have to make it quick to interact. I need to be able to click things and do stuff right away. If I want to see pricing, I have to be able to click pricing in the nav and get there right away. And it's got to stay still. We've all had that experience where you load a site, something's flashing up and down, a rainbow cat flies in from the side, the slider starts going, and you have zero idea what is happening. Frustrating experiences. You can't get oriented. You don't know what to do. And then someone hits that dreaded back button. So the tool that we use to look at this, it's called PageSpeed Insights. It's from Google. This is what it looks like. I'm going to pull this apart for you, I promise. So we see a lot of numbers and a lot of scores. These are the things that Google looks at and that we can then interpret to make improvements. We focus on performance. So this is a desktop store. We've got a couple scores across the top. A lot of things in here. Good scores. What does that mean, right? On desktop, we want to see 80, around 80 or higher for performance. And on mobile, we want to see 60 or higher, right in those ranges. From our studies, we've seen that the best results come from there. You can see great results in content generation and generate great traffic. But at a certain point, Google's going to kind of cap you because you're not giving that experience. The end goal for any search engine is drive a better experience so that folks are getting that content and the answers they want fast. Google has even said, while this is important, 
They will serve more relevant content ahead of a faster website if it makes the most sense. We have to do both. Hi C, hi C's in the room, where are you at? There they are, hi C team. So this is the before of their website. 37 on performance, this is desktop scores. It wasn't a great experience, it was sl slow to load. We just relaunched the site, I believe this week. Jump to 92, there's a lot that goes into this. Round of applause for the high CT, y'all. They put in the work, we revamped the website, and all the scores go from kind of reds and yellows to greens. The work continues, but the immediate jump is a better experience. It's loading faster. People can start actually getting into their journey a heck of a lot sooner than they used to. But Google makes it hard to pass those scores on purpose. 37 as a before is not uncommon. Some of y'all in here have that. And some of y'all that have newer websites might even have some things that still need to be improved. It's hard on purpose. Google wants you to work hard. To the tune that they throttle back performance on mobile when you test mobile to like a 3G speed. No one's using 3G. My mom still has an iPhone 8. They're testing for folks like that, right? That have that older model. That's why we have to put attention into this. We have to make sure it's a consistent experience for everybody that hits our website. The second thing to keep in mind as we're looking at PageSpeed Insights, scores are variable. Y'all can test right now, and we will in a second, I promise. Y'all can test and you'll get 10 different scores every single time. It's gonna range plus or minus five, and that's okay. It's because every time we load this, we're seeing what that initial experience could be. Things like your actual internet affect these scores as well. So we keep that in mind and we look at this and we know that this needs to be a benchmark. We have to know where we're going from, from our 37 to our 90, so that we can see where we have to get to. So really quick, scan this, it's in your workbook on page eight. It's gonna pull up Google's PageSpeed Insights. And I want everyone to quickly run your homepage through this. This is what you're gonna see when you get to that. So type your domain in there and you can do one or two other top pages. And I want you to write down your mobile score and your desktop score. While you're going through this, I'm curious. Really quick show of hands. Who knows that you're getting more mobile traffic than desktop traffic? Jeffrey, I see you, a couple folks. Okay, put your hand up if you know you're getting more desktop traffic than mobile traffic. Kevin, I see you, a couple folks. All right, now, now put your hand up if you have no idea what traffic you're getting. I see you, Maddie. All right, some folks. This is where we need to focus, gang. This is the big stuff. Who's got a score that they wanna share? 91 for mobile and 90 for desktop. It's usually the reverse, that desktop's lower, uh, higher, so heck yeah. We're serving a good experience, right? Who else has one that they wanna share? What do you got? Mobile 60. Mobile 60. 93 on desktop for homepage, okay. More desktop traffic. So we know we're nowhere serving a good experience on desktop. Mobile, we still wanna optimize because Google's gonna look at mobile, but you're hitting some good points. Awesome. All right, so everyone come back to me really quick. Keep testing those scores. Write down those pages and know your benchmarks. The biggest thing that we need to look at here, y'all, is we have to focus on what we can control. There's a lot that we can go into. Some folks are gonna have really high scores out of the gate. Some folks are gonna have some that are right around the benchmarks and the goals we wanna be at. There's a lot of stuff that you can go get after optimizing. There's a lot of things, both technical and non-geeky, that we can get after. The biggest thing that I see every single time that every human in this room can control is large images. Everyone has a dreaded, I see chuckles happening. There's large images on every website in here. And those large images kill your experience. Compress your images. It is literally like taking the largest suitcase that you can carry, pack it with stuff. It's gonna take longer to load on your website. That's what we're doing with large images. Luckily, in the last 10 years, I have not found a great tool to do this aside from manual work. You've heard of our partner and friend, Franco, from Narrative SEO. They rolled out a tool for the folks on HubSpot here that is literally a godsend. It's called Pixel Compress, and it will automatically, automagically, however you want to look at it, 
Optimize every image on your HubSpot website. And it does it in a way that makes it super easy to keep it consistent, and if something goes awry, immediately roll it back. This is what it looks like, and I know this is geeky data and stuff, but I'm gonna hone in on one specific thing that I want you to see. We ran this for a client, and the initial size was eight, uh, 289 megabytes. Lots of, lots of load, lots of stuff that needs to be done. After it got down to 204, uh, we saved, excuse me, we reduced 204 megabytes off of all images on their website. What does that actually mean? That's a lot of files saved. That's 70% reduction in image size loading across the entire website. Kevin, was that you? That was you. So speed, that is literally that experience. That is making it so every single page loads faster because the images are smaller. That's huge. So if you have HubSpot, you do not have Pixel Compress, I strongly recommend you look at it. Franco has an awesome deal for everyone here at Live. When you sign up, if you use Live24, you're gonna get 25% off for the first year. Make sure you chat with him during the break. I promise you, this is the tool I've been waiting for for quite some time, and it helps a lot. Because at the end of the day, we have to optimize for the human so that we optimize for the robot. Faster images make it load faster for our user, which makes Google, Bing, all the other search engines happy with the experience we're serving. The investment pays off. It's not only for the humans, it is for the robots. Focusing on experience means that we, know, we need to know what's actually going on with the user, though. And that's why we need to leverage user data, which is our second piece. So we've optimized images, now we're gonna look at what's actually going on with our user experience, because it's, it's about them, right? But how do we know that we're giving them that good user journey? How do we know that we've laid out the right roads, the right pit stops, the paths for them to take? They'll tell you if you look at the data. You will see it in bounce rates. You'll see it in lack of conversions. You'll see it in pages that we think are gonna crush it and no one actually gets to them, no one converts, no one follows through. You just need to look at the data. We have to be the guide, Aaron spoke about it. We have to guide them and take their hand and literally say, you came from my homepage, here's every other stop on your journey to make sure you are educated and you don't make a mistake. That's it, we have to guide them, we have to be that compass. We have to look at those bounce rates and say, how can we improve that? It's a lot of potential missed opportunity if we have a bad journey and it is our job as their guides to create that along their website. So we need to use the data. Study by Unbounce, for those that are familiar with Unbounce, big testing company, they found that companies that prioritize optimizing with user data see 223 higher average revenue per visitor on their website. That's a big jump, simply by looking at user data and leveraging it. It's because we're obsessing over the customer, we're obsessing over the pain that they might feel, and we're able to get more out of the traffic that we're already seeing. Who here wants to get more out of the traffic that we're already seeing? Yeah, everybody, everybody wants more. So it's using the insight on users, what they actually want so that we can get the best experience. There's a sad truth about most websites. They're confusing as all heck. It's Charlie in the mail room putting line drawings together and freaking out about where I need to go. No one knows. Donald Miller said it, Aaron said it, if you confuse, you lose. And the sad truth is there's a lot of confusing user journeys out there. But if we look at the data and we look at what people are actually showing us, we can see things like confusing navigation items. We can see things like unclear calls to action. We can see content that doesn't resonate. Our content managers in here should be looking at data to make sure that it's resonating. People are getting through it. They're clicking to the next great thing. We're gonna look at a Loom really quick. So this is a Loom's homepage. And as we look at this, They've been working with our team for quite some time, optimizing user journeys, getting feedback, understanding what's actually going on. We use tools for this. Lucky Orange is one of my personal favorites. It's a great tool, and it gives you geeky stuff like this. Show of hands, who's seen a, a heat map like this before? Heck yeah, all right. So this is a movement map. This shows where actual users are moving their mouse across the website. Navigations are as bright as the sun. That's a standard that you will see. But we see folks actually using their mouse to read things on the screen. So later today, you're gonna to hear about the power of watching sales teams tape. Lots of folks have already heard that. This is your digital salesperson's tape. If you're not looking at data, you don't know if they're performing, y'all. You don't know if they're going to the right spot or if they're clicking on an image that's not clickable because people are gonna people, this is where we know if our investment in our website is paying off.
because from that heat map, we're seeing people actually go down to please select, who am I? They're self-identifying, they're jumping into their journey. For Loom specifically, they're clicking on this area and it's the second most interacted element on their homepage when you load it. People immediately go down and jump into their journey. More than 7% of clicks on this page go to that area. People want to know that they can jump right in and be met with the right stuff. But without seeing this, there's no way for us to know that. There's no way for us to go deeper and actually optimize so that we can limit the steps that they're taking, limit the clicks, and ultimately find the best path for them. We need to get rid of Charlie in the mailroom and find the path through the trees so they can land, educate, and get to our salespeople when they're ready to have that conversation. We have to actually know what's working for them and you know, get them to work with our companies. So finding the best path, it means finding confusing navigation elements, understanding what resonates with them more, and finding the right content to get them to their next step. Really interesting example is Holly from Opus Partners. She just ran a study, and I'm gonna show you what she tested. She looked at this specific section of her articles and her pages, so content managers' ears should be perking up right now. She didn't do anything crazy from this test. She looked at this section, and I believe before it was just related articles as the page title. She ch tested that. She tried to see what happens when I change the title, when I change some of the resources for one of their most successful articles. Lots of traffic, not a lot of click-throughs, and a really high bounce rate. I think she ran the experiment for about a month, and here's the result. Almost a 10% average decrease in bounce rate across the site. Some of y'all in the back of your heads are saying, Vin, that's not a giant change. That doesn't really matter. That's a huge change. That's 10% more people that are not ending their journey that are going through and digging deeper into Opus Partners content. Now they are a heck of a lot more likely to actually reach out because they didn't hit the back button. And it was as simple as changing related resources to more from Opus Partners and tweaking some of the next steps that they had there. But here's the, set, here's the best part, here's the best part. Your competition isn't thinking about this. 68% of businesses don't have someone even looking at conversions or optimizing around conversions. Not having someone not reviewing your data, especially for one of our best sales tools and what should be our best sales resource, it's literally like taking your entry level person and expecting them to turn into Leo from Wolf of Wall Street overnight. You're not gonna get this. You're probably gonna get John Travolta walking around the room not knowing what the heck to do, and then it's gonna take years for us to fix the problem. And then we go through another website redesign because we got John Travolta, we didn't get Leo. We can use tools like Lucky Orange. And here's the kicker, gang. 41% of companies don't have someone reviewing the data. There's no human, whether it's a full-time position or someone's kicker to their main job, actually digging into this. That is wild to me because there's so much here that we can actually take to improve those results, to fill the holes in our proverbial bucket that are leaking out the good opportunities, that are leaking out potentially big fish for us to catch. We're making our sales teams work harder because we don't have someone actually looking at what's going on in our websites. All those leaks, all those sales qualified opportunities, we can fill those back in. One of the ways that we can do that is asking, Janet mentioned it earlier, using surveys to actually get data and feedback. We had a client that pulled their folks after a specific touch point in their journey. They wanted to see what was going on with it. They found something that was interesting to them. They lost $20,000 of an opportunity to a direct competitor. $20,000 on the nose doesn't seem like a big thing. But they only found it because they asked them. What if they didn't ask them? What if that $20,000 miss to a direct competitor went unseen and that turned into 10 additional missed opportunities? That's $200,000 missed because they didn't ask. But they found it, they caught it, they fixed it. Only because they asked them, gang, they asked them. Star-Lord's brain's exploding because it's that simple. We just have to be okay asking. And then we need to take that data and actually do something with it. So this is what it can look like. We use a tool, we put some things on the sites, y'all have likely experienced this. We gather the information. These are surveys straight from Lucky Orange. Something like, how much do you love the slider on our homepage? That changes every two seconds. Has rainbows flying in, it's got a video in the background, there's strobe lights that come out. 
It's terrible, I hate it, get rid of it. Well, sorry Carl and marketing, our users hate it, they're not liking it, it's not driving the right results, we have to kill it. This is how we can have those internal conversations because there's someone that thought it was a great idea. You're about to kill somebody's great idea, but the data speaks for itself. And if the users don't want it, we have to change because it is not about us, it's about the end user. Because when we optimize for the human, we also optimize for the robot. So every time that we're fixing those hurdles in their journey, it sends out ripple effects. The, the internet knows that we're fixing things for our users, and we will get rewarded for that. So go check out Lucky Orange, check out other behavioral data tools like that, install them. They start from free, they go to paid, but that is one of the biggest things that y'all can start doing to start optimizing our websites. It boils down into our most important work horses of our website, our conversion pages. This is one of the biggest things that I spend a lot of my time looking at is, how do we get more out of the people hitting these pages? We saw Linta and they have a phenomenal video. They've got a form right there, right? That helps set expectations. Prioritizing these pages is key to our success. But the average conversion rate on most pages is about 3% across most industries. Ranges between four to, uh, 2 to 4% depending on where you're at. But this is low. That is literally that public's line. 100 people could walk in that store, three people purchase. That's not a good business model. That's crazy town. We got to get better, y'all. And using the data is how we can do that. So how do we actually start getting after it? Clarity. Clarity improves conversions. Every time that we get more clear, every time that we set better expectations, our users are gonna feel less fearful about that next step. And we've been talking about that a lot over the last two days. So we've been working with the team over at Illum for quite some time. Matt ran an experiment over there. Matt, where are you in the audience? There you go, hey guys. So this is their conversion page. It's not terrible. There's some good stuff happening here. This is where we started. So we've got some content, we're setting up some expectations, but there's nothing really here that draws the eye. There's nothing to emphasize or guide me as the user. So we ran an experiment with this as our B version. That was A, this is B. I want you to focus on two key areas that they made updates to, because this doesn't feel like a giant change on the nose, but they added emphasis here. They bolded, you're gonna get someone to talk to you within 24 hours of your submission, clarity. They tell you that the initial consultation will go through a few steps with the doctor, more clarity. But not only that, they added some trust boosters to this page, providing clarity to the experience. Someone actually went through this and had a good time doing it. They got the results they needed and the care was unparalleled. More clarity into that experience and what will happen if I decide to fill out this form. Let's look at the data. So that's an easy change. Everyone here could likely go do that right now in the break. You should. This is what it looks like in HubSpot. This is one of the reasons why I love HubSpot. This is the A-B testing tool in the data that you can see. Orange is the A version, blue is the B version. I'm not gonna make you look at the numbers and do the math, I did it for you, because I hate math just like all y'all do. 23% more form submissions by adding more clarity. 23% more form submissions. That over time is gonna generate a heck of a lot more trust and authority and better results for that team, simply because they did the test. Now, there's one more piece to this that we'll talk about in a little bit that they're already working on in the background, but at the end of the day, it's clarity. It's clarity, clarity, clarity. We have to have clarity to improve those conversions. So we like our, our number systems here at Impact. We've got the clarity five. So five steps to page, conversion page clarity. We have to set clear expectations in video and text. Video and text, I know Alum, you're working on that video right now. We have to tell them what it's gonna be, what it's gonna look like, what that first touch point will be. Here's the questions I'm gonna ask you in the first 30 minutes. Here's what we're gonna to get to by the end of that call. We have to look at our action-focused button text. If you have submit on your most important form button right now, please go change it. No one wants to submit anything to anyone or any place. We wanna take action. Studies have shown that if you have submit as your button, it actually works 3% less uh, successfully than a more action-focused button. Change it to maybe not get started, but start your consultation, schedule your time, book your appointment, anything that is not submit, and you will see some better rates from that. Studies have shown. Prioritize your form fields. Alum has a lot of fields on that form. It's the most important conversion point on their site. They should ask for a little bit more information as long as the value exchange is there. 
which goes into the text and the video and making sure we're setting up what it's gonna look like for them. So experiment with your form fields there. Five is typically the solid number that you'll see as optimized, but you can go up to eight to 10, again, depending on the value exchange. And the last two were tied hand in hand. Bullet out exactly what happens. Make it clear in no uncertain terms so that I have zero fear on what the process will look like and specifically state what they're gonna get out of that exchange. If I'm gonna give you 45 minutes of my life to talk to a salesperson, a BDR, whoever you're gonna put me with, I better know it's worth my time. And most companies don't actually tell me what it looks like or what I'm gonna get. Yeah, you'll get a quote, but how am I gonna actually use that quote? What are you gonna give me after that to make my life easier and better? Make it clear and make sure that we have that video. Because 80% increase in conversions can happen if you just add that video to that optimized landing page. More clarity. A human actually giving the clarity versus just text. Payday, from a, uh, Payday HCM doing a solid job. We've seen layouts like this before. But this is another example of a video that sets clear expectations. And they say right below, we're not going to sell your information. Payday team, I see you over there. It's, it's exactly where we want to go, right? We need to optimize. You can add a little bit more clarity, but it's a really solid foundation that welcomes someone in. And we have a human face there welcoming them too. And it's great. It's a good experience. It's a good landing point, landing spot. As we go through this and all of the things that I just meant went over in the, the Clarity 5, best practices are test practices. Without tests, without the data, without seeing what's actually happening, we're just making more guesses and more assumptions that we then have to validate and do more work on. There's a rhyme and a reason for all these things. Adam Savage from Mythbuster says it best. The only difference between screwing around and science is actually writing it down. So you need to write it down. That's why we did some benchmarking. We need to know where we're coming from to see where we need to get to. I like screwing around just as much as the next person, but I also like looking at the data and seeing that, hey, we made some real change based on what we saw with our users. So what's the process for that look like? There are six steps. Conversion optimize six. We need to set our goals. We need to know where we need to get to and what we want to do. We need to audit, benchmark, know what we're actually seeing current state. We need to plan. What are we actually going to test? For a loom, they wanted to test some of the clarity content, bolding, emphasis, small stuff, big returns. And we need to look at our test cycles. Typically, four weeks is a good test cycle. And we got to look at the amount of, of visitors and traffic we're getting as well. But four weeks gives you some fluctuations in time. You get weekends baked into that so you can see some really cool trends. Then we review and analyze the data. That's the hard work, making the, the assumptions that we're seeing and saying, all right, based on what we saw, we're going to select this winner. It was a pretty clear winner for Illum. Then we're going to report and recommend internally. Because if we don't take this and actually bring it to our leadership and the people that care, they're not going to know that the stuff that we're doing on the website for our best sales tool to optimize it is actually working or not working because you're not going to win every test you do. You are going to lose some of these experiments. That's OK. We need to celebrate those losses because now you know what not to do. If you said this is going to work, I know that changing that message is going to hit more people. It's going to hit them right in the feels and they're going to convert. And then you see a 20% decrease. Cool. Do not do that again. You learn. That's a celebration point because now no one in the company should use that message again, or that button text, or that field, whatever it is. At the end of the day, gang, your website should be your best sales tool. It should be your best salesperson. If you're not looking at the data, if you're not running experiments, if you're not focused on this, it's not. It cannot be. These are the things that we can start using to crush our sales goals, make our websites our best salesperson. So go get after it.